Minister Sherlock. Yeah. Thank you. Here, look, I understand that I uh, am sharing my time with Deputies Barry and Fitzpatrick. Yes, you're yeah, 10 thank minutes. You. Thank you very much. Uh, the government uh, is attempting to create a necessary framework that seeks to reform and evolve the social protection code and I'd like to address my comments in the context of the overall budgetary measures that were uh, introduced and if I stray slightly from the exact contents of the social welfare bill I, I do so because I want to give it a wider uh, a, a wider context. Uh, we have to look at the social welfare bill in the wider context. For the thousands of workers out there who are not in receipt of any type of social protection measure, there is a strong view that reform of the social protection code is necessary. Uh, I would take on board the views that have been uh, espoused uh, by the deputies who have just spoken, who have just preceded uh, me. And, and I think uh, that we have to have due regard to the extraordinary uh, fiscal pressures that we're under in terms of uh, the deficit reduction target that we are aligned to. And I think, to be fair to Mi Minister Burton, I think she has genuinely uh, sought to address the issue in relation to uh, you know, the disability payment. And I think we as a government uh, you know, have listened to what has been said by, by all sides of the House in relation to that issue, and we have moved uh, to seek to address that issue. Uh, and you know, I think for some of us who are only in government a, a relatively short time, I think we openly acknowledge that uh, there are issues within the budget which are being addressed, uh, and, and we do acknowledge the, the, the statements that have been made uh, on the far side of the House in relation to that matter. Minister Noonan has stated that the pressures on our social welfare budget uh, are, are enormous. The financial allocation of job seekers' allowance our job seekers' payments alone has increased from 1.4 billion in 2007 to 3.9 billion this year, and that's an increase of 176%. The provision for state pensions has increased from 3.75 billion for 2007 to 4.7 billion this year, uh, and we will need to increase uh, this financial allocation year on year due to the demographic uh, profile. In 2012, an additional allocation of 175 million will be required. Minister Burton is honouring our commitment not to cut welfare rates and not to increase income tax uh, on working people and to protect carers and standardise child benefit payments. The social protection measures in this bill signal a move by government to move our country closer to economic recovery and towards the restoration uh, of our sovereignty. The National Training Fund will provide 4.2 million for training on CE in 2012. Uh, in addition, SOLAS uh, will continue to provide access to its training programmes to CE participants. Uh, the Department will be spending 977 million on employment supports in 2012. That's up from 882 million in 2011. It is in that context that reforms of how labour market activation and labour market supports are funded and managed uh, are being looked at. This includes looking at the funding received from other sources, including statutory organisations. We have to reform our welfare and training systems so that people who lose their jobs do not drift into long-term unemployment, and this is committed to in the budget. The need to shift from a, a, a passive welfare system to a far more active approach is vital. And I, I think in spite of anybody's political ideology, I think we would all subscribe to, to, to that philosophy, uh, uh, you know, I, I, regardless of our, uh, our own political ideological views. The government will publish Pathways to Work, and this will outline our approach to deepening the labour market activation policy area. The social protection budget then, in my view, Cahirlock, needs to be viewed holistically. Capital spending on job-creating programmes will be increased in 2012. The department and its agencies, my own department and its agencies, will be able to continue current levels of spending on job creation, as well as increasing the scope for some crucial uh, programmes and implementing some new measures. In my own area of research and innovation, we have preserved or maintained a payment of £370 million for 2012. Uh, and Although that is 98% uh, of last year's provision, it's a slight decrease, it does allow us uh, to be able to work to support 
that collaboration is between research uh, and uh, industry. This will enable us to support Irish companies to gain capacity to develop innovative products and services, which are vital for survival and growth. And it will also strengthen Ireland's capacity to attract high quality foreign direct investment companies to Ireland and to embed them here as a consequence of our cutting edge uh, innovative profile. The ultimate aim there being to create jobs and to move people back to work or to upskill people and to try and move people out of the social protection measures that they rely on. We know that the companies that have invested in research and innovation and ensured their products or services had a competitive edge are the same companies that have held or grown market share uh, or held or grown employment. The increased capital budget in 2012 uh, will allow for a 4% increase in the Enterprise Ireland capital budget, maintenance of the IDA capital budget, budget, maintenance of county enterprise boards capital budget, delivery of the partial loan guarantee scheme and microfinance loan fund, 18 million spend on the innovation fund uh, Ireland to further improve the Irish venture capital industry. And specifically in the area of research and innovation, it will also enable new technology centres in cloud, e-learning and financial services to be commenced. Also a 20% increase in the number of innovation partnerships. Support for the Science Foundation Ireland uh, research community of over 3,000 researchers, including research teams working with over 500 industry partners. And we would also maintain the programme for research in third level institutions. We will also double the number of technology innovation development awards to 200. We're also uh, improving the R&D tax credit, uh, the first 100,000 of R&D expenditure of all companies will be allowed uh, on a volume basis for the purpose of the R&D tax credit. The outsourcing arrangements for R&D purposes will be improved in a targeted manner to allow the greater of the existing percentage arrangement for R100,000. Companies will have the option to use some portion of the R&D credit to reward key employees who have been involved in the development of R&D. So the key aspect of that is to ensure that companies can grow, grow create employment and again move people from work, move graduates, particularly uh, research uh, funded graduates into workplaces and try to create the framework to allow us to do that so that you reduce that dependency on social protection. The future for business lies in staying competitive and maintaining an innovative edge uh, over our competitors. The initiatives on R&D tax credits announced in the budget will send a clear signal to business that this government is supporting their efforts to develop new products and processes and to uh, assist them to win new markets uh, in the present challenging environment and ultimately again to create jobs. Over the next two years the government will commit approximately one billion uh, in enterprise capital supports. Uh, the enterprise capital budget is not only being largely maintained but the capital provision is receiving a small increase in 2012 to its highest level ever in the context of total capital cuts of 750 million in 2012. This represents a major statement of government priorities. So the government has made clear a choice to prioritise uh, jobs and enterprise and the budget announcements this week uh, are a tangible <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> result of this choice. The budget provision of 20 million euros will, will assess, uh, assist this process and the measures are designed to ensure that we aid recovery uh, so that uh, those on the live register can take up the work that is being created as a result of these initiatives. Are, am I okay on time, Michael? Here, you have uh, uh, over a minute. Thank you very much. You know, we have delivered uh, on the programme and the uh, or the commitment in the programme for government not to cut primary social welfare payments. Uh, child benefit rates for the first two children remain unchanged, you know, at €140 Euros a month. We are unwilling to impose the level of cuts to social welfare spending by an, an additional 665 million in 2012 as espoused by the last government. And the government is limiting the adjustment in social protection spending to 475 million, or just over 2% of the department's spend in 2012. You know, the primary weekly social welfare payments are fully protected. For example, job seekers allowance and job seekers benefit but remain unchanged at €188 Euros per week. And the child benefit rate for the third child will be reduced to 148 and for the fourth and subsequent child, uh, children uh, to 160 uh, from 2012. If we compare that to uh, Northern Ireland, child benefit in Northern Ireland is 102.50 per month for the first child and 
67.70 per month for each additional child. The adult rate for job seekers allowance in, and benefit in Northern Ireland is 78.33 euros for an individual and 122.95 for a couple. The rate here will continue to be 188 for an individual and 312.80 uh, for a couple. So parents to carers will also be maintained and the half rate carers allowance will continue to be paid to people who are full time carers and who are getting another welfare payment. So we, we, we must provide context to this social welfare bill. Those who for historical purposes will pour over these debates you know, must know that the loans that are financing our day to day spending are subject to the condition that we reduce our deficit to 3% of gross domestic product by 2015. Uh, we have had to take some tough decisions, but I think, in fairness, we have preserved the basic rates. We have acknowledged, you know, a, a mistake that we have made, and we are moving to address that. And, you know, we are trying to move to create labour market activation measures that will move people from uh, dependence on the social protection into. Uh, into work and we're doing our best in that regard.